With the holidays only just starting, I figured that I might as well take this opportunity to start upgrading a bit of my tech that I use daily. The first few pieces that I looked into replacing were my keyboard and mouse setup that has been the same for a couple of years now. Now I wanted to keep my setup as minimal and as clean as possible, yet keep the same level of performance, if not better, that I was getting out of my previous peripherals. What's good guys, Tack here and I hope you're all doing well and if you're in the same boat as me and need some ideas in terms of replacing some of your tech that you use on an everyday basis, then sit back and join me in reviewing some of the tech that I picked up for my very own setup. This is my new go-to, the all popular Poker 3 mechanical keyboard by Vortex. Now this model has a small difference comparing to the original Poker 3 keyboard, this being that this one comes with a set of LEDs behind each keycap, but more on that later. I picked up the Poker 3 from mechanicalkeyboards.com and it sent me back just under 140 US dollars, excluding shipping, but all up including shipping and after conversion rates applied, I paid roughly just over 200 Australian. The link to where I purchased this exact model can be found in the description below. Now the Poker 3 is available in either a black keys and case combo or a white keys and case combo. And Vortex offers a variety of different Cherry MX switches and LEDs and it's always good to know that this keyboard may be used with either both Windows and Mac setups. Now inside the box you get the keyboard itself and the supplied detachable USB cable that is more than one meter long so it should be adequate for a variety of cable management setups. Note that the cable is thick plastic and does not come in a braided form. However, because it is detachable, you are free to replace the cable with a braided one if you choose to do so. But I find that the supplied cable is good enough for me and gets the job done. This is also a great feature in terms of portability. With the cable being detachable, it saves you from wrapping the cable around the keyboard. And in the sad event of a broken one, you can simply get a new one and you'll be just fine. Whereas with other keyboards that have the cable fixed or attached, well, that may be a bit of a problem. Now I've linked a few choices for aftermarket cables that you may be interested in that will definitely be better than the one Vortex supplies. The Poker 3 does not come with a manual, but it can be found online in a PDF form that I have supplied for you guys down in the description below. Another thing to note is that Vortex no longer includes a keycap puller that can be found with the previous models, but again, I've also included a few choices down below just in case you are looking to replace the keyboard's keycaps or are looking to clean it up a bit or want access to the switches below. Now let's talk build quality, and Vortex have moved away from the Poker 2's plastic chassis construction and have given the Poker 3 a stronger and more premium feel, utilizing a full cast aluminium one piece housing. With this type of material being rather common on most high-end keyboards from competing brands such as my previous keyboard from Corsair, the K95. Due to this new case, the Poker 3 offers a robust and durable feel in terms of build quality, with minimal to no flex, a solid weight and overall gives the Poker 3 a much cleaner finish. One of the main reasons as to why I chose this keyboard to be my new daily driver for my setup is simply because of its performance and aesthetic appeal. The case is finished in a very clean matte black with a very minimal frame housing, the keycaps giving the keys a very satisfyingly floating look on the keyboard. The lines are very minimal, with the edges coming in at approximately 2mm thick. On the bottom you will find 4 fixed rubber feet that do the job but do not offer height adjustment, but this didn't really affect me in terms of ergonomics and ease of use, as the keycap layout sat nicely in terms of elevation for my palm and fingers at resting point. All in all, this can be also fixed with the addition of an aftermarket palm rest that I am looking to also get in the near future. The entire keyboard comes in at just under 400 grams, which is 14 ounces that screams a premium solidly built product at such a small size. Now one of the main differences between my K95 and the Poker 3 is of course the size, with the K95 being a full size keyboard with an added set of G keys to the left. The K95 left my table feeling rather cluttered and in comparison to the 60% key layout found on the Poker 3, which gives me the bare essentials and makes my setup that much cleaner in terms of appearance. This feature in itself was one of the main selling points for me, because I rarely use the G keys and the number pad on my K95, however I will miss the dedicated media control keys that are not present on the Poker 3. Now moving on to the switches and keycaps, the Vortex offers the well-known Germanly engineered Cherry MX key switches, and in this model that I have, I opted for the Cherry MX clears, which have the tactile but non-clicky mechanical feel, which are very similar to the ever so popular Cherry MX browns. 
The clears are a stiffer version of the Browns, with a tactile bump and weighting of 65 centinewtons of actuation force, moving from the gaming style linear switch of the Cherry MX Reds, found in my K95 that needed only a mere 45 centinewtons of actuation force with no tactile feedback, the clears were a big change, but after a few weeks of regular use, the change was rather pleasant, with the reds often resulting in mispresses and accidental keystrokes during heated matches. The clears on the Poker 3 offered me a more noted keystroke that I could clearly register with my on-screen action. The clears offer more of a cushion feel when typing as well, which is also a lot better in my opinion compared to the reds when typing up documents or for just general keyboard use. Now what's also good to know is that Vortex have opted to use Cherry MX stabilizers allowing for easier removal of keycaps instead of the wire style stabilizers which tend to be a little bit more tricky to work with. Now the keycaps found on this model of the Poker 3 are unfortunately laser etched ABS style keycaps and this was rather a letdown for me. However they are solidly built and are very hard to remove using a proper keycap puller thanks to the clear switches but I was hoping for them to be double shot PBT keycaps because on my K95 another reason for replacing it was in fact the keys especially on the most used ones in terms of gaming which were the WASD keys and the number keys where they were showing some considerable signs of wear and tear with the D key on my K95 being rather unreadable. Now to some this may not be a big deal but to me I like to keep my setup visually appealing and clean and with laser etched ABS keycaps it won't be long until it happens to my keys found on the poker. With that being said however I managed to order a set of Vortex backlit double shot PBT style keycaps off mass drop and I'm hoping to replace these stock keys that I have as soon as I receive them which will ultimately fix this issue of my keys fading away after extended use. Now the backlight feature is the main difference between the original Poker 3 model and the one that I have right now. This keyboard features a full set of white LEDs on board the Vortex labelled PCB layer. The white backplate housing the switches allows the LEDs to give off a brighter light, helping the keycaps to become significantly brighter. The always on LED mode has 7 layers of brightness and other modes include programmable lighting for individual set keys, a reactive touch mode and you can even of course set them off as well. The modes can be alternated holding the function and pressing the X key with the C and V keys adjusting brightness. Overall, the LEDs are a nice touch and something I've grown accustomed to, so this option was definitely worth waiting for, as I really would have missed the lighting on the keyboard. White goes with my setup and is more of a neutral colour that goes with a lot of other colour options of other peripherals. I believe in the near future, the poker keyboards will catch up with the times and offer a full RGB LED keyboard option, which is rather common in all the high-end performance keyboards from other brands such as Razer and Corsair. Now moving on to the last important feature of the Poker 3, the keyboard layout is composed of 61 keys, which is the respective size of a 60% keyboard. The switches are rated for over 50 million operations, featuring N-key rollover, and are hardware programmable with macro capabilities, which means the keys are somewhat programmable to certain functions, and this relates to the dip switches that are found on the base of the keyboard. Now every key is capable of executing 32 keystrokes thanks to this feature, and in addition to this, the Poker 3 comes with multiple layers that come pre-programmed including QWERTY Dvorak and Colmac, which can be set using the first two available dip switches. The last two dip switches will enable certain keys to change their programs with the third switch changing your caps lock key to a function key and the fourth switch will allow you to change the position of your function key and program keys. Moving back to the key layout, due to the 60% keyboard size, certain functions and keys have been double assigned to a single keycap. For example, the F1 to F12 keys are found on the number pad, front printed on the keycaps and are usable when holding down the function key. This goes for other important keys such as media controls for volume being pre-programmed to the S and D keys respectively holding down the function key again. However, these keys aren't labelled but the assigned program function can be read within the PDF manual. It is really good to know that the keyboard does not rely on any drivers or software updates and instead offers full flexibility and customization straight out of the box using onboard memory and multiple layers for programming. At the end of the day, after extensive research, I chose this keyboard over the other competing keyboards for many reasons, with the main one being the size as the Poker 3's minimalistic approach, Vortex have managed to pack in a full set of performance parts and features into such a tiny but really satisfying package. Now does this alleviate the price I paid? Well, to be honest, yes it does. The Cherry MX Clear switches, in my opinion, are a lot nicer to use in comparison to the Reds I became used to and really is a pleasant change. 
The Poker 3 still offers that clean and aesthetically appealing LED lighting system, as simple as it is, that we've all come to know and love. And this is just a feature being present that was just simply an added bonus. And on top of all this, it is a solid build quality that I am more than happy about, with the keyboard housed in a new and updated aluminium frame that I just love. So what do you guys think of my review on Vortex's Poker 3 backlit mechanical keyboard? Do you think it's worth picking up for yourself? If it is, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys like about this keyboard. And if it isn't, then let me know what type of keyboard you're actually using in your own setup. I'd love to hear from you guys. That's all I have time for today, guys. My name is Tack from Tack Gaming, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.